If this is our ninth physics lesson, and this is on 2D projectile motion and the horizontal projectile motion math, we'll look at, look, look at how if you threw something horizontally, how it would act, and how we can solve for different parts of that path. The learning targets this this unit, we're going to look at x and y axis motion, and you're going to be able to de de determine why it acts independently and explain a little bit about that. You're going to be able to identify key moments of a projectile path including the beginning, the top of the flat path, and the landing at the same height, and be able to tell uh, a little bit more about that. And we're going to learn how to use equations during projectile motion to do some of the, the at least the horizontal math, and then later on we'll look at the, the normal um, angular math. But in this unit, we're not going to get any further, uh, at least now, um, for the horizontal projectile motion problems. So we'll see those at the end. So the, the term projectile just means anything that's been thrown in the air. Um, it could have gotten the air anyway. Anyway, it could have been thrown up, it could have been dropped, it could have been rolled off the counter, and it doesn't actually even have to follow, uh, you know, unless it's 2D motion, a projectile itself can just be going up and down. But in this unit, we're going to have 2D motion. So taking a look at this, 1D motion in our previous unit, we could have solved for, you know, any velocity, time, different things using our acceleration equations when they went up and down. We still can actually use those, and you'll see that as we get to the math later on. But now we're dealing with a x component as well. It's not just going up and down, but it's also going sideways. A uh, house falling on a person would also be considered free fall. Um, anything that's under the influence of gravity doesn't have to be a ball. So the x and y velocity act independently from each other. But the main thing that, that you have to understand is acceleration due to gravity is pulling something down to the ground, creating an acceleration on the y-axis motion only. What that does is that leaves the x-axis in constant velocity. So you're going to see, I'm going to put these together a little bit later, but you're going to see that this ball is going to be moving at a constant velocity, same rate the whole time. Just ignore that it's bouncing back to the front. It's really just think about it's constantly moving to the, to the right in this case. It's not affected by acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration if I asked you would be zero because it's in constant velocity. And then that's commonly depicted by this picture right here. So just take a look. Uh, what this is showing you anytime you see this is that it's like a time interval. It travels the same distance per time interval. So every time you see a little dot, that just means the same amount of time occurred, and the dots are all equally spaced. So you might see that. Just recognize that as constant velocity. Now the y-axis motion, you're going to have it going up and down, and it's affected by gravity. It's, it's changing its velocity. Remember the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second every second. So every time, every second a ball is in the air, it's going to be changing its velocity downwards by 10. What that's going to do is slow it down on the way up, and it's going to speed it up on the way down. And so that's what this is saying right here. And to depict that, you'll often see um, as an object's going up, it is traveling more distance, so it's traveling further velocity in the same amount of time, and then less, and then less, and less, and that's a deceleration. And if you just follow that track right back down, it's increasing, so it's accelerating on the way down. Once again, at 10 meters per second squared, because it's in the air in free fall. Now, if you combine the motion, take a look at this y-axis. It's going to be at the same height the whole time, because it's being accelerated by gravity. And then the x-axis is going to be in constant motion. And if you follow the two together, you get this actual parabolic path that's occurring. And so that's that center ball is what's really occurring. But both of the other motions are occurring, causing that, that parabolic, that curved path that you see here. Okay, and so if you wanted to pick that, you would see this occurring. So overall, this kind of this kind of motion, it's slowing down the way up, speeding up on the way down, but we know that the x-axis is in constant motion, whereas the y-axis is, is accelerating, slowing down on the way up, and speeding up on the way down, because it's always accelerating downwards. So that's what slows it down on the way up and speeds it up on the way down by 10 meters per second every second. So you'll see this common diagram that we'll use in, in, in a problem, and we'll, we'll, I'll give you some numbers and we'll ask you, ask you questions about it. And this is just showing you, if you take a look, the arrows on the way up are slowing down, or getting smaller, that means the object is actually slowing down to the point where you get to the top, you don't have any um, Y component. And then it, you see it increasing the Y axis velocity on the way down. So we often will break these X and Y components separately, but we'll look at how to put them together just in case I ask you that later on.
So some basic information, I'm going to throw some numbers in so I can kind of ask you some questions about it. So this is not something that's always going to be given. Uh, right now I just said, okay, just in this situation, the, the initial ball was thrown up, thrown with an upward component of velocity of 30 meters per second, and the X component of velocity was 5 meters per second. And so the first thing I want you to see is that if you know 5 meters per second anywhere, you're going to know it everywhere. So that will never change. This component will never change. It'll be 5 meters per second in the air at the top. It's going to be 5 meters per second forward uh, when it lands. Or even if it fell to a further spot, if it, if it landed further ahead, um, below where it started, it would still be 5 meters per second, whereas this, this, the Y component of velocity might have increased if it went further down from here. So if you know X anywhere, you know X everywhere, and that's one thing I want you to remember. So VX, VX anywhere, velocity in the X axis. Also, you might see me using a VI or a VF, VI, VIY or VFY. That's because the you're going to have initial and final velocities in the Y axis because it will change. Occasionally, you might I might be talking about a single spot, and I might use just VY. But in general, if you're doing any problems, you're not going to have just VY. You're going to have VIY, initial Y, or V um, FY, the velocity final in the in the Y axis. Okay, so back to still to on the X axis. Uh, one thing to note because of what you saw here at the top, because there's no Y component of velocity, the Y axis velocity equals zero. It, the ball doesn't actually stop. It's just traveling straight horizontal at five meters per second at this point in time, and that would be its entire um, entire uh, entire velocity. And also, this is going to be the point where you have the minimum velocity because it's it. In order to find velocity, you'll see later on, you put these two vectors together, and at this point at the top, you only have the x component of velocity. Okay, so the y-axis. Key points to note are all on this slide right here, but in general, uh, the y-axis is being accelerated by 10 meters per second squared down. So it slows the velocity on the way up, speeds the velocity the, the velocity speeds on the way down. If you remember the signs, if you call down negative because you have up and down motion going on, when you're going up, the velocity is actually a positive velocity, but the acceleration is still down or negative. So that when these signs are opposite, you're going to have a, a deceleration. But then once it stop, it doesn't exactly stop. But once the y component stops, even though there's still an x component and then switches directions because now the acceleration just caused it to now be down as well. The velocity all of a sudden is down on this side, but it's changing in a downward path too. So you notice that these, these vector arrows are getting longer and longer and longer. So key here, at the top of the flight, the y component is zero, even though there would still be a horizontal component of velocity. Once again, this is where I'm just talking about a single point, and that's why I'm not saying it's initial or final. I'm just saying at this point. But in a problem in the future, you may call it initial or, or final. Another key factor is if you know that it's thrown up with a velocity of 30 meters per second, you know when it lands at the same height, and that's why I have this extra line over here. It's also going to be 30 meters per second. Any of these vectors at the same height would be the same velocity, just the direction switched. Now, if you want to find the velocity at any single point, like this beginning point or this end point, you can take these vectors like you see here and you can place them head to tail. So to determine the real velocity with the direction, you'd have to put the other arrow head to tail with the first arrow. And then you can go ahead and solve for the hypotenuse and you can even come up with an angle that the, that the object is flying at. So we'll go ahead and do that. We have 5 meters per second forward and 30 meters per second down. So here's your Vx and here's your Vy at that moment. So here's your first problem, and you can either work it with me, or, or you can, um, if this is watching the video, you can pause it and try to work it yourself, because you know how to do this. You, you've done something similar, just in a different area of, of physics. So to solve for the overall velocity, this, this magnitude of it, you're just going to do Pythagorean theorem, you're going to use the sides. So you get 30.4 meters per second for this right here. Now, if you want to find the angle, you would take the opposite. In this case, this is going to be opposite the 30 because it opens up to the 30, and the 5 is on the side, the adjacent, and you would get 80.5 degrees. And just like anything in physics, you still need to describe the 80.5 degrees. In this case, you can call it below the horizon. So if you think of the horizon, look at a sunset, you're looking at the horizon, um, you're below that horizon by that 80.5 degrees.
So it's not really stating if it's to the right or to the left, but you can be more specific if you, if you knew more information. So this one, um, what's the speed of the ball that lands with five meters per second horizontal with the uh, velocity component in 30? So same question, but I'm asking you for speed. The key here, you should remember, speed is a scalar. You do the same thing, but you would end up with just the magnitude and not any angle. You can't give it an angle of its speed because the direction doesn't count. So let's go ahead and just let me ask you some questions, some scenario questions. I'm going to give you new numbers um, so I can ask you these questions. The ball is thrown with a horizontal component of velocity 12 meters per second. So that's horizontally this way, forward, and initial vertical component of 25 meters per second up. So upwards 25 meters per second. Go ahead and start answering these questions. Pause the video if you're watching the video at home, answer the questions, and then come back and try to um, see if you got the questions right because there's some trick, tricky areas where students often miss questions and you want to miss them now and realize what you're having trouble on, not just listen to my answers. So what's the vert vertical component of velocity at the of the ball at the top of the flight path. This is gonna be zero meters per second. There's no up or down on this middle um, ball that you see here. And when you say vertical, it's up and down. When you say horizontal, it's gonna be left and right. Just to make sure you understand those, those terms. So vertical, this is the horizontal, this dotted line you see here, the up and down is gonna be the, the vertical. What's the horizontal component of velocity at the top of the flight path? So now we're talking about this. And if we know it anywhere, which we do at the beginning, we know it's going to be 12 meters per second there as well. Then what's the acceleration of the ball at the top of the flight path? Well, it's always going to be 10 meters per second squared down. So the ball doesn't exactly stop, but the Y component stops for a second. But it's not going to stop for long because it's always being changed by that 10 meters per second every second. Then what's the overall velocity at the top of the flight path? Well, that's going to also be just the, because you knew that this was 12 meters per second and there's no y velocity, it's just going to be 12 meters per second at that point. What's the overall magnitude? So I didn't mean for you to see these answers. What's the overall magnitude of velocity, of velocity that the ball land at? Well, the overall is going to have, it was going to require you to do a little math. So you'd have to take the 12 and the 25 and just because I say magnitude, I mean don't worry about giving me the um, don't, don't worry about giving me the direction. Just go ahead and do these two. Take these two numbers, and this would be the same magnitude of velocity at the beginning. You do the same exact thing, but you put it head to tail, and then you go ahead and solve for it, and you get 27.7 meters per second when you do the Pythagorean theorem using these numbers. Okay, and then the next part I wanted you to actually see afterwards, so let's just talk about why these are the answers. What is the vertical component of velocity when the ball returns to the same level? Well, the vertical component is just talking about this 25. It's going to be 25 down. What's the horizontal component when it returns to the same level? Well, this is 12 meters per second at the beginning, and the horizontal will stay the same, so it's going to continue to be 12 meters per second once again. If you know the Vx anywhere, you know the Vx everywhere. Okay, so then a few more facts that you should know. Just take a few notes on these. Um, if you launch a, a ball at 45 degrees, and this is where we've been, we're, we're dealing with ideal conditions. So I'm not talking about any sort of wind patterns. Um, not really talking too much about air resistance. You have a pretty aerodynamic projectile. 45 degrees is going to get you the furthest, the furthest downrange. And downrange just means furthest, far, furthest away from where you would have thrown it. And for the most part, we're talking about landing at the same height, too. So someone would have to catch the ball at this point right here. Um, going along with this, if you wanted to get the highest height, um, that should be pretty obvious. You throw it straight up. If you threw it at, at 90 degrees straight up, you're going to get no forward, no forward downrange. You're not going to be downrange at all, but you would be the highest you possibly can be off of that throw. Another thing you need to know about is perspective with uh, projectile motion. If you're watching, if you're an observer watching the projectile motion, uh, what you see is going to be different than what a pilot would see. So let's just, once this animation starts again, if you're watching it from the side, it's going to look like it's following this parabolic path, getting faster and faster and faster as it goes to the ground. But if you are a pilot, you're only seeing, you're right above it, you're going the same velocity as that package. 
because the V axis is the same of the plane and the box the whole time. So the, the pilot is going to, to the pilot, it's going to look like it drops straight down, even though it really doesn't. So go ahead and answer these questions, and then we'll go over those answers in a second. And that'll be the end of this part of the, the video. And then I'll walk you through the projectile motion math in a, in a separate lesson. This one's getting long enough. So after you've paused it and, and answered the questions, then you're ready to go ahead and listen to the answers. Um, 45 degrees above the ground would be would it, would the, be the way you can get a ball to the furthest down range. So not talking about this right here. We're talking about the pat, pat, the last picture where the guy's throwing it up at 45 degrees. Um, how would a package be dropped from a plane that travels constant velocity? Appear, how would it appear to the pilot? To the pilot, you see exactly what you see here. It's falling straight down. To the observer on the ground, it's going to look like it follows this curved path forward that you see right here, this parabolic path. So you might see parabolic in, in an answer somewhere. And then when would the package have to be, where would the package have to, or when would the package have to be dropped in order to hit the target on the ground? You'd have to drop it. If you take a look, the pilot has to drop it before they actually get to the target so that it will follow that projectile path, this curved path, and hit that target exactly where you want to hit it. Um, which would hit the ground first? So um, in this one, depending on uh, which version of my handout you have, you might not have this on it. Add it to it. This is pretty important. Which would hit the ground first? And the thing is that if a ball was dropped, thrown horizontally, and I should have had a little bit more information from uh, which would hit the ground first if dropped from the same if it started from the same height in the y-axis. So if it was dropped from that same height or thrown for horizontally at that same height. From five meters per second, we're talking straight ahead, or thrown even faster, 25 meters per second, they would all hit the ground at the same at the same time. And let's just take a look at this picture. This animation is kind of showing you a little bit more. If it's dropped from this height right here, it takes 0.76. It's thrown a little faster, it takes 0.76 to hit the ground. If it's thrown even faster, it still takes 7.6 0.76 to hit the ground. So um, those those will be the same no matter what, and that goes back to this question. So that's where I want to get you on this lesson. The next lesson, we'll go through the projectile math.